side is indented. Okay. Good, good, good. There we go. Yes, plastic bags, useful. Run around the space on my table. I believe this is the correct one, I'm not sure. I have to figure that out later. <laughs> I didn't, th I didn't think it came with one of these. All right, just to satisfy all of you who are going to complain that you didn't get to see the suit, I'm going to do something I've never done before and review it. Yay. By the way, full disclosure, while I'm recording this, there's currently a storm going on outside. So if you hear some, uh, some very, very high quality storm ambience, then, uh, th then that's why. Starting off by taking a look at the design of the set, let's start with the most exciting bit, the bandana. The quality of the bandana is to be expected, being high quality and on par with the Doctor Who bandana, also made by Geekpaw. However, something that I've noticed that I'm not too happy about is the lack of a snap on the Infinity Set bandana. I understand that bandanas don't typically have snaps, but considering both bandanas are meant for fursuiting, I can't really understand that very specific design choice. The design on the fabric, however, used for the bandana looks great and includes all your favorite Marvel characters such as Thanos, 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 and everyone's favorite, Thanos. Moving right along, the tail is extremely fluffy, and while the Infinity Gauntlet silhouette looks great, it's shaped just a little strangely. This is also an issue on the Doctor Who tail, where the DW logo is slightly off kilter. However, this doesn't bother me nearly as much as it should. It almost makes the tails a bit more charming because you can see their handmade nature. An interesting bit of continuity is that the fleece that's used for the Infinity Stones on the silhouette is the same fleece that's used on the stones on the actual Infinity Paw. Taking away from this, however, is the fact that the fur used on the marking of the tail goes the opposite direction as the rest of the fur? I don't know if this was an intentional design choice, seeing as this issue doesn't exist on its Doctor Who counterpart, but once again, this doesn't annoy me nearly as much as it should, simply because the different fur direction almost makes the marking more striking. However, it does make the tail difficult to brush if needed. Comparing the size of the tails, I'm almost convinced that the Infinity Tail is slightly bigger, but I can't be sure. In addition to this, both the tails are fairly short and have elastics at the end, which allow them to be fairly bouncy, which is difficult to show above a granite counter. Now then, it's time for the interesting part. The part you've all been waiting for! The right paw! You know, the one that isn't the infinity paw. Seeing as the paw is made out of the same materials as the tail, the paw is just as soft and fluffy, and is constructed just as well. One of the defining features of Geek Paw's fandom sets are the presence of characters on the paw pads, and on this paw we have Star-Lord, Gamora, Teen Groot, Rocket Raccoon, and... Spider-Man? Yeah, an interesting design choice that was made on both paws is that the characters aren't grouped together properly. Comparing these paw pads to the ones present on the Doctor Who set, we can see that the Doctors are all in their respective order, with the first Doctor, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, with this pattern continuing on the other paw with the seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. This isn't really present on the Infinity set, but considering the design of the fabric, I can understand how it would have been difficult to group characters together better, but it still would have been nice to see. Getting back to the paw itself, putting the paw on is as simple as putting on a glove, who knew? But an interesting design choice that was made is that the new paws have the double finger in the middle, while the old paws have the double finger in the pinky. I know that this is a fairly common design choice in fursuits, but it's still going to take some getting used to. This choice is welcome, however, seeing as this method allows for the paws to be even more paw-like than before, which is a welcome change. Now let's talk about the main event, the Infinity Paw. This is okay. 
Nah, I'm just kidding. The Infinity Paw is probably the highlight of the entire set, if only for the novelty. The main shape of the paw is identical to the other paw, so I'm not really gonna get into it, so let's talk about the Infinity Stones. The stones are shaped and stuffed well, and are in their movie accurate placements, but there is one problem. What? Yeah, the soul and reality stones are way too close together. This issue would have been likely fixed if the stones were made smaller and placed more proportionately, but it doesn't really bother me personally. What does bother me to a degree though, is the Mind Stone. It's way too small. But once again, I can understand this choice because if the Mind Stone was bigger, it might affect my ability to move my hand back, so once again, this issue would have been fixed by making the other stones smaller. Wearing the paw, however, is a totally different experience than the other one, and we can thank the Soul and Reality Stones for that. Many of the stones have been shifted slightly up so they're partially on the fingers and partially on the back of the hand. Now, this wouldn't be an issue if it weren't for the fact that the Soul and Reality Stones are so close together that it creates pressure on the inside of the paw, but it's not enough to be overly annoying or choke your hand, and this also goes for the rest of the paw. One thing that both the paws have an issue with, however, is how well they fit on my hands. Now, why would this be an issue? Well, it's simple. This set wasn't custom made for me, and I have kinda small hands. But in the end, this just makes me happy that I got the set instead of someone else getting it and complaining that it didn't fit. But it still would be nice to see bigger paws for people with bigger hands. So, in the end, what do I think of this set? Well, if I'm going to be completely honest, I love it. Yeah, I know I've been kinda ragging on the set for the entire video, but I still absolutely love it, if only for the novelty. The one thing that sucks about Geek Paw Phantom sets is that she doesn't like to repeat ideas, but if you want any future Phantom sets, or if you want to commission Geek Paw, links to her website will be in the cards and the description below. And with that, thank you all so much for watching. If you liked it, feel free to hit the like button and stroke my ego in the comments below. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button and tell me why in the comments below. Basically, Leave, leave a comment, it would be much appreciated. And if you really liked it that much, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications if you're so inclined. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.